I think in 20 to 40 years, most people will make their babies by going to a clinic and making 100 embryos, then having each one of those embryos have all of its DNA sequenced, and then the parents will be asked, which one of those embryos do you want to try to move into a woman's uterus in order to make your baby? PGD, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, takes an embryo made from old-fashioned IVF, an egg met a sperm, and formed an embryo. And at either day, somewhere between day three to day five, one or more cells are taken off that embryo and genetically tested. The problem with PGD has always been you have to use IVF. And IVF is not fun or cheap. But if IVF becomes easier, then more people want to go through PGD. If you could make eggs from skin cells, 90% of the cost and almost all of the hassle and risk of IVF go away. When you do egg harvest currently, on average you get about 12 eggs from a healthy woman. The range is from zero to about 25. If you make them from skin cells, how many eggs do you get? How many eggs do you want? It's a cell line. You could make hundreds, thousands, millions, in theory, billions. So you'll have, instead of three embryos or five embryos to, or ten embryos to look at, you could have a hundred. And the other side of this is whole genome sequencing, spelling out every part, every letter of the DNA of that embryo, currently would cost you about $5,000 per embryo. But that's getting cheaper and cheaper. And in 20 to 40 years, that'll be cheap enough that sequencing a hundred embryos will be relatively cheap. I'm sure there'll be people out there who say, why would we want to make a hundred embryos? Why would you make a hundred? Well, that's a good question. Most people aren't going to have, aren't going to need to make a hundred in the sense that they're not going to have 90 embryos that would have bad health risks. There are about 6,000 really nasty early onset genetic diseases. The good news is each one is rare, but when you multiply rare times 6,000, you get about one or two percent. Then you get, say, BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations. Again, maybe one in a hundred people, but if you've got that, each one of your embryos is going to have a 50-50 chance of inheriting it from you. So if you have a BRCA1 mutation and you don't want your children to get it, each embryo is 50-50. Then things like Alzheimer's disease. There's a version of a gene, of a, the ApoE4 version of a gene, greatly increase someone's risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. About 25% of us carry that. So when you begin to add up all the different risks, you'd probably want to make more than 10. Do you really need to make 100? Probably not. Um, but it's a nice round number, and I, my guess is it'll be affordable. But it would give you more choices on cosmetic traits, a little bit of information about behavioral traits, and of course this would easily tell you boy or girl. And you could choose all of those things. To some extent. Now, this is embryo selection. It's not embryo editing. If you and your partner are both blood type O, you're only going to get blood type O babies because that's the only genes you have to give them are blood type O genes. If you have light colored eyes, you're not going to get a dark eyed baby. So you're not going to get your perfect baby. You're not going to get a designer baby. It's not going to be anything you want, but it'll be the thing you like best. 